Thank you very much, Stacy, for joining us. This is your second or third time you're joining us? My second time. Second time. I'm a repeat offender. <laughs> you're so good. You're so expert in what you do. Then I think I have to uh, replace myself with you. I don't think so. You know so much that I don't know. And I feel so lucky that, you know, we're friends and colleagues and we, we get to learn so much from each other. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and help agents, you know, execute. And in this market in particular, taking your ideas and being able to implement them is the key to, you know, really thriving. So I'm excited for today. Absolutely. I'm uh, more than happy to have you with us here. So uh, without further ado, I'll let you, I'm not sure how much time you need, but uh, I've had the cases that half an hour turns to one hour because everybody were asking questions. So mm -hmm. without further ado, this is the uh, platform. Go ahead, uh, Stacy, and introduce yourself, what you do, and uh, take it from there. All right, so I'm glad you're letting me introduce myself because I'm afraid of what you would say if you introduced me, Ashton. Ashton and I have been on the same skin in the game call every morning, which is how we met. And we've been sharing and collaborating for over a year now. So um, I consider myself really fortunate to be part of that group. And again, just to have you as a friend and colleague, my name is Stacy McVeigh. I'm located a short 22 minute flight due south of Ashton in Cleveland, Ohio. So we suffer from the same miserable weather sometimes. And um, I have been in real estate and have been a licensed agent in production for 31 years. And also since 2009 have been leading various uh, franchise offices as CEO and have been a business consultant, consultant and coach since 2016. So I've been doing this a minute. And one of my favorite topics is um, talking to agents about implementation because we have no shortage of great ideas. We have no shortage of free trainings we can be on that are really high level trainings. When I think back to when I started in the business to see a training, you would go to some hotel conference room somewhere and there would be a speaker all day and we would pay hundreds of dollars to watch that training. And then in, in the back of the room, it was thousands of dollars to buy all the training materials. Um, Mike Ferry being my favorite back then. And what you know, you just didn't have the access that you do now. Well, the problem is we're overwhelmed with access and we're overwhelmed with great ideas. And so how do we decide what is the right thing? How do we decide how often we need to do the thing? And how do we get results? So that's what I'm here to talk about today. So if that's not what you wanted to talk about, you might not be on the right call, but I'm hoping that's what everybody came to the table hoping to learn more about today. So um, without further ado, let me jump in. I'm going to share my screen. I do need to do a little bit of clicking around here to make sure we get ourselves to the right place. So please bear with me. And this is kind of a second part of a conversation that we started. Ashton, how long ago was that? A month or so? That's right. Three yeah. Months. So. I am no stranger to business planning, especially this time of year. Um, in my former life as a team leader of an office of about 325 agents, we had a whole eight hour workshop that we would do um, helping our agents plan for the upcoming year. And the problem with that invariably was that we would move a bunch of numbers around on a spreadsheet. And at the end of the day, it was, I need this many calls to make this many appointments to make my goal. That was kind of what it distilled into. And then people would leave with their business plan and would have a very difficult time actually implementing that. Like, how do I cause all of this to happen? And it was a trap I, I fell into myself. I mean, here I am sitting in October, planning for next year, and I don't know what's going to happen next year. None of us saw COVID coming where we would be shut down and our market would be turned upside down. No one saw interest rates doubling and in some cases tripling. Um, a lot of things have impacted our market that we couldn't anticipate planning in October for having to pivot 
uh, you know, in, 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 in response to these things happening. So what happened about four years ago was I read a book called The 12 Week Year. Um, we were coached to read it at the time. Uh, we had an implementation coach at the time that was helping us get things done and we weren't getting things done the way we wanted to. And so we needed to learn a better system around executing our business plan. And we started that with the 12 week year by Brian Moran. So we're going to go over the very, 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 very like top level basics of that today. But I'm going to show you exactly what we've implemented, not only in my real estate business, but my coaching business to get people results. So we're going to start right here. You need a system. Okay. If you haven't read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, He's a proud Buckeye native here from Ohio. He's from central Ohio in Columbus. He's an outstanding author. If you're not subscribed to his newsletter, write that down. It's called the 321 newsletter. You can Google it and sign up for it. It's one of the best newsletters I get weekly, and I highly recommend it. It's very simple, it's a quick read, and it can be incredibly impactful. Um, so out of the book, Atomic Habits, he talks about this. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. And that's really true. And by nature, we're entrepreneurs, so we're not very systematic in how we approach things. You know, a lot of us bleed corporate so that we could have more autonomy and do things the way we want to do it. But we need to find a happy medium between being too regimented and too structured and being able to be flexible and letting the crazy that real estate always brings along with it show up in our day and still be able to move forward in a purposeful way on what we had planned no matter what comes up so we're going to talk about that system today and for me that's the 12 week year so while i might have an annual income or profitability goal that's pretty much where i stop now so i don't do the eight hour big annual business plan anymore okay i do it on what's called a 12 week year annual business plans tend to focus a great deal, you guys, on lag indicators, contracts closed, GCI earned, okay? So you're making goals around how much GCI you wanna earn, you know, how many uh, sales you're gonna have. And those are lag indicators. A lag indicator being something that's evidence of something you did before. You took action and a result showed up. It's a lag indicator. And kind of the one of the core tenets of a 12 week year is when we set goals, we should be setting goals around lead indicators, a lead indicator being an action that you have 100% control over 100% control over. So if I have an action planned tactic, which we refer to the mass quite a bit, if I have a tactic planned, it's totally within my control. It's a lead indicator. It's something I can choose to do or not do. I can take complete ownership of it. How much money I ultimately earn, I can influence, but I can't 100% control. Okay. But what I can control is the, the, the number in number, progress. Oop, Oop. The number or, the, or the cadence of the activities that I'm going to take on. Okay. So in this conversation today, we're not going to be focused on how many units or homes we're going to to sell. We're not going to be focused on how much GCI we're going to earn, like a very typical business plan. This is very action oriented. So we're going to be focused on things like how many calls we're going to make, how many appointments we're going to hold, how many contracts we're going to write. These are lead indicators. They're things I have 100% control over. Okay. So let's go to the next little bit here. Goal achievement is all about alignment, guys. So we're doing this super fast. You're getting like the, the toppest size uh, serving of the 12 week year today. But you need to know that what you choose for your 12 week year is really a stepping stone for where you ultimately wanna be three to five years from now and where you're ultimately going in your business. Okay, so these these stepping stones, if you imagine you're standing on one side of a really wide river and you want to get to the other side, okay, you need to build these stepping stones. And the important thing about that is you need to know where you're going to end up on the other side. So be very clear about where you want to be long term. 
then we need to be very clear about where we want to be in three to five years. And then we figure out how to place that first stepping stone, that first 12 week year. What are the first things that I need to do to put all of this into action so I can line these stepping stones yeah. up, get to where I want to go ultimately. Okay. So it's really important that you understand you have to be clear about where you're going and you need to be clear about these midterm goals. And I'm for today's conversation, I'm going to assume you're clear on that, on where you want to go. Okay. And if you ever want to talk more about this, let me know. You can DM me on Facebook or whatever. I'm happy to happy to answer that for you. But we need to, we need to rethink. We're going to start by rethinking goal setting in general. Okay, we're looking for SMART goals. So they're specific, they're very measurable, and so measurable, in fact, that someone who knew nothing about real estate could look at your scoreboard and tell whether you are winning or losing the game. Can you imagine watching a soccer match or a football game with no scoreboard? But we do it all the time in our businesses. We don't have a scoreboard. You know, your scoreboard is your 1099 tax form at the end of the year. And you're like, well, I guess I did better than last year. You know, you're just really not good at tracking where you actually are in your business. So we want to make sure it's extremely measurable. So specific, measurable, we want to make sure it's aligned and actionable. This is something I can, I have 100% control over deciding if I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. It's not dependent on anybody but me. Okay, so it's in alignment with where I'm going and what my priorities are, and it's very actionable. Okay, and then this R that we've been taught is realistic. I want you to throw that out the window. Okay, the R in a SMART goal is not realistic. I don't like realistic. That's, that's a fantasy. We don't know what's real and what we're capable of. We don't know. You know, we've never lived to our full potential. So we don't really know what realistic looks like. And I think that sometimes that can become a lid, okay? I don't want you to think in terms of realistic goals anymore. I think that that can be a little bit inhibiting and that doesn't allow you to consider all of the ways that you could get to where you're going, okay? So let's make sure we're not thinking realistically but we do want something that is very relatable to where we're headed, okay? It has to be relevant, and we want to make our goals relevant by tying them into where we're going. And then last but not least, it's time bound. And in our case, in this example, it's a 12 week period of time that we're going to measure our goal within. So making sure you have a SMART goal. So let me give an example of a SMART goal that is specific. I will write 15 contracts, okay, within the next 12 weeks that will allow me to reach my goal of $24,000 in savings. Something like that. The relatable, the how it's how it how it relates to my overall thing, what it gets me, right? Is the R make sure you tie that in like where am i going if i write 15 contracts what is that going to do for me how does that move me forward make sure you include that in your goal statement okay and we're always going to make sure we're focused on lead indicators i can do the activities so that i'm i'm sustaining enough business that i can write as the number of contracts i need to write where i lose some control however is whether or not those contracts stay together. I can influence that, but we can't make people buy houses. Sometimes things happen, okay? So I'm not gonna measure closings. I'm gonna measure how many contracts I'm gonna write. And with that as my goal, now I can start to see what types of activities I need to do to make sure I can write 15 contracts in the next 12 weeks your brain will automatically go there. It might have already gone there when I said that, when you're like, wow, if I was gonna write 15 contracts in the next 12 weeks, what would I be focused on? How would I do that, okay? So I wanna talk just a minute about this whole relevant and relatable, the R part of 
the SMART goal, okay? You need to make sure that your goals are ambitious. And I'm gonna give you this quick example. And we talked about this on the last call. If I'm training for a 5K or I'm training for a full marathon, are those trainings going to look the same? Yes, no, you guys can shout out. I think you're all unmuted. Those trainings don't look anything alike. I can probably walk a 5K now. I could probably jog a 5K. I might hate myself afterward, but I could probably jog a 5K without changing much in my business. That's a realistic goal for me, guys. Okay, over the weekend, we went to uh, Ellicottville, New York, and they were having their Halloween uh, half marathon and 5K. And I can tell you just by the look of the participants, there was different training going on between the people that were running the 5K so they could get to the bar for the happy hour and live band afterwards versus the people that were half marathon runners. Okay, it's not, I'm not being judgy at all. I'm just saying it's a completely different approach and it's the same in your business. So when you set a realistic goal, it's not requiring me to change anything. I'm not gonna have to start running every day. I'm not gonna have to get on a great nutrition plan. I can probably knock that out. Like I said, I might have a little icy hot on my knees afterwards. I might be huffing and puffing a little bit, but it's not a stretch for me. But for me to run a half or a full marathon requires a complete makeover of my exercise, my nutrition, my sleep, and everything else. It's probably also going to require me to reach out and get some help. I'm going to need a coach and probably not just a running coach. I'm probably going to need to learn to stretch. I'm going to have to learn to manage my nutrition better, all of those things. And I like to reach out to people who know more than I do. So as you can see, this is a great analogy for our business plan. So if you wrote a realistic goal for yourself for next year, because you don't like to be disappointed and you don't want to feel like you came up short, you're shortchanging yourself because it's not about crossing the finish line at the end and being like, yep, I checked the box. That's not what it's about. It's about the journey and what we're going to learn along the way and what it's going to cause us to have to do that maybe we're a little uncomfortable with. Okay, so set a big goal for yourself. I don't care if you miss it. Stop looking at falling short of your goal as a failure. I would rather fall short of a 15 contract goal and learn a lot than, you know, slam dunk a five contract over the next 12 week goal. Okay, that didn't require me to do anything different. I'm not growing personally and I'm not growing my business at all. Okay, so we want to talk about learning to love your peas and that's planning and prioritization, which we have a really hard time with in our businesses. And so this 12 week year will help you plan and prioritize so you don't always have to be wondering what you should be doing. Okay, so this is it in a nutshell. I took an entire book, an entire book, and it's now three lines on a slide. So I think I've, I've done it a little bit of a disservice Okay, but I'm going to try and give you as much detail as I can. So this is the part where you're going to want to take some notes. So the period of time is 12 weeks. Best practice is never to start it at the beginning of a quarter or even at the beginning of a month. So if you were going to start a 12 week year, a great time to do that would be on an off week on an off month. Some people do one a year as a sprint. Some people will do a string of 12 week years. I'm one of those people. All right, I'm completely obsessed with this as my plan of attack toward my businesses. So the length of time is 12 weeks. For those 12 weeks alone, just for those 12 weeks, you're going to do an honest assessment of your business. And in particular, guys, an honest assessment of your pipeline. In other words, how many 30, 60, and 90 day prospects do you have in your pipeline? And depending on how fat your pipeline is, that will determine the tactics that you're going to use to get your contracts written. 
So in a 12 week year for a real estate agent, I took liberties with this. This isn't in the book. Um, the number of goals is in the book. He's like, you never want more than three goals. Okay. For my purposes, guys, and I think for most real estate agents, we're all striving for a little bit of balance. So what I like to recommend is you take two of those and make them business goals. They're business related. One should be a contracts written goal. Contracts written, it's really important. And then the second can be whatever it is you're working on. Again, look at that pipeline for Pete's sakes. Look at your database. Look at the foundational systems in your business. Is something lacking that if it were in place, you would be able to just explode next year? Okay, is something holding you back for, from being able to do more? We had this come up on a coaching call of mine. I have a lady, she's absolutely lovely, that I coach in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and she was doing a client event. And she had done it in the past and had about 30 people show up. She did something at a pumpkin patch. And we started building a system for her around inviting people to this event and making the most out of it. And she had a lot of aha moments through the whole process. But the biggest one was her database was a mess. And she's like, oh, my God, I never realized that I have people everywhere. And it took her six tries six tries to finally get everyone invited to this event because she had she kept importing these contacts from other places and she's like this was so much work and this was so messy and so miserable i said because your database was a mess and i said now if i told you we're going to throw another event in two weeks she goes oh it would be a snap because we have everything in place so is there something in your business that's missing, that's preventing you from doing all the things you wanna do. And if that's true and you have that thing, that can be a great second goal. That can be a fantastic second goal. And then that third goal is personal. It's about you. It's about your relationships. It's about your sense of well being. okay? And we have a lot of people that use that goal in order to make sure they're staying connected to family, that they're connected to themselves, and that they have a sense uh, or a plan for their overall wellness. Okay, so three goals total, all focused on lead indicating activities. Okay, so for those three goals, if you're just want to jot it down on a piece of paper, we have two business goals, and then we have this personal goal. And then we're going to brainstorm ways to make those goals happen. So we'll go back to my 15 contracts written goal. If I have that and I need to choose three to five action oriented tactics to make sure I'm going to be able to write 15 contracts. And so the magic question inevitably is great, what three to five things should I be doing? Well, that's why you have to look at your pipeline. If you have a very anemic pipeline, guys, and you set yourself some wildly ambitious goal for next year on an annual business plan, you now have a problem, okay? You're already behind the eight ball because those of us who have been stuffing our pipelines, we have people that are gonna, they're gonna take action, they're gonna purchase a home three months from now, uh, some of them seven months from now. I'm already incubating those leads. If you don't have those people in your pipeline, that will determine your tactics, okay? Your tactics will be all around new leads in the top of your funnel so that you can start building those relationships and moving them along through the process. If you already have a lot of people in your pipeline, that might look a little different for you. So here would be my advice. If I have a very uh, thin pipeline, there's not a whole lot of people in there. One of my tactics is going to be around making regular value added touches and contacts to my sphere of influence and adding people to my sphere of influence. I'm going to be going out to open houses. I might visit brokers open, things like that that I can take action on and I can get new leads coming into my pipeline. 
If I already have a fat pipeline, okay, my tactics might be around. Um, if I already have quite a few people in my pipeline, the next thing that I can do is we got, oh, thanks. All right, perfect. Um, so the next thing that we can do is maybe um, have an appointment goal. So I'm going to be taking buyers out this many times per week. I'm going to go on this many listing appointments. Okay, so it's totally dependent on where you are in your business. That's what I love about this is it'll meet you exactly where you are and allow you to really drill down and focus on what you most need. Okay, and those those tactics, that's a brainstorm. You can write down, go through your notes from trainings and classes that you attended. Um, talk to people who have been in your shoes and find out what activities you could be taking to either add to your contacts because if you have no contacts if you have an appointment goal that's a problem that's going to set you behind so if you if you need to grow your sphere if you need to get back in touch with the people that you've already done business with or people that you know from a past career make yourself a goal around that and it could be a number of touches per day it could be something like completing a friends list on Facebook. So all of your important people are in one place on Facebook. You can post specifically to them and you'll see, you can sort your newsfeed so you can see what those people are posting and you can stay engaged with them. That might be another tactic. Maybe you start a private Facebook group for your people to keep all the other realtors eyeballs off of what you're doing to provide value to your people and giving them a, a place where they can start to build community with one another around common interests around things going on in the community around asking you questions and so on so there's lots of tactics that you can choose but you're going to narrow it down to three to five and you want to make sure they're a big domino you know, whatever you're going to be doing, it's something that's going to cause collateral damage. Don't do now's not the time to do something fluffy. Now's not the time to go back and redesign your postcard campaigns. It's not, this is hand to hand combat type tactics that will allow you to have conversations with people. The truth of the matter is, the more conversations you have, the more business you're going to have. Okay. So here it is time bound 12 weeks two business goals one of it needs to be number of contracts written it just unless you're brand new if you are brand new in the business i probably wouldn't have a contracts written goal i would probably have an appointment goal just i'm just focused on setting and getting appointments if i'm brand new brand new no pipeline no clue okay i might start right there so and and the beautiful thing about this guys so I'm not asking you to like forget everything else. I'm just saying for the next 12 weeks, we're going to kind of put some blinders on and we're just going to go focused and deep on these things. Okay. So if we're, if at 80, you guys have heard about the 80, 20 rule, right? 20% of our activity drives 80% of our results. And the 80% is the stuff that we're bored doing anyway. You know, all that crap we got to do as real estate agents, but it really doesn't move the needle in our business. Okay. These tactics need to be 20% tactics. If you're an experienced agent, I would go with the 90 10 rule. Okay. The 10% of what I do drives 90% of my results. In other words, out of that 80 20 rule, if 20% of those activities drive my results, in there, all of those activities aren't created equal. In there, there are some tactics that are absolutely deadly. That if I just doubled down and I went deep on those, I could receive a better result and with a lot less hassle and a lot less expense. Okay. So, a lot to take in there. And it is a chore to boil an entire book down into one slide, but that's pretty much the crux of it. Okay. So I'm going to give you some effective strategies for executing on your tactics. Okay. 
you want to make sure that they're personalized to you. So if you're someone that just gets sick to your stomach thinking about making cold calls, don't set a cold call tactic up in your plan because you're not going to stick with it. Okay, pick something that you're good at. Pick something that is natural for you and, and as easy as possible to slip into your routine. Okay, so for example, if you're someone that does a lot of volunteering, okay, and you're having a lot of conversations with people, develop tactics around that. If you're really good at open houses, do more of them. Okay, but don't set tactics that you're you're not going to be able, you'll do for three days and you'll hate every minute of it and then you're not going to do it anymore. Okay, pick something that you can stick with. It's really important and make it personalized for your sphere of influence, your market. What works for you? Are you somebody that walks their dog or goes for a hike every day at the park? Great. Do it now with a shirt on that has a QR code on the back. It links to your your information. OK, start talking to people, strike up more conversations, show up in a way that's more purposeful. OK, just pick things that you can easily just mush into your daily activities. If you're a parent with a kid in sports, this is a no brainer. This is a no brainer. OK, you're just going to show up differently. And you're going to show up with intention to connect with people. All right. Uh, unless you're on my son's hockey team, and then I, I have the goalie on the team, so we don't talk to any of the other parents. We don't even sit with the other parents. So that's a whole different conversation if you have a hockey player. All right. You're going to break your task down into smaller, more manageable steps. So if you have no database at all, you have nothing but your client planning a client event, you're going to have a problem. OK, so make sure you do not have the cart before the horse. Make sure your tasks are broken down into smaller, manageable steps and plan for the fact that some of these things that maybe you've been putting on the back burner in your business might take you a little longer than you would like. Sometimes they even mean we're going to be a little bit bored. And we're not doing the fun stuff. OK, so if that's indeed the case, break it down into smaller, manageable steps and track your progress. I think it's so important to have a scoreboard for yourself. OK, so that you know at the end of the day what got done. You know that you showed up and ran your business that day because we don't get to write a contract every day. Right. So how do I know if I'm done? How do I know if I can close my store? and feel good about what I did that day if I'm not planning out my time and keeping track of what I'm doing. Okay, so that's really, really important. Those tips will really help you moving forward. So have a plan and find your tribe. So there's tons of people talking about the 12 week year. There are tons of videos on YouTube that can help you get a better understanding of it. I have a whole coaching program around it that launches again in early December. So wherever you are, you need to find a tribe and you need to have them interact with you in a way that helps hold you accountable. So Ashton and I hold each other accountable every day for over a year now. And after listening to me drone on for probably 20 minutes or more, you probably really, you should feel bad for Ashton because he gets this every morning. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that we've helped each other so much and the other people in our group have helped us move forward because we know what one another's goals are. We know what one another are working on and we have gifted one another so many resources so that we can save time and move forward faster. So have a plan. And then you can find the people who can help you move forward. It's absolutely critical in executing your 12 week year. And certainly if you're gonna do an annual plan, I would caution you to rethink that. But if you are doing an annual plan, please, please do yourself a favor and incorporate accountability into your plan. Every day you need to be telling someone, hey, this is what I'm gonna do and then checking back in to make sure you did it and if you didn't have someone ask you gosh what got in your way what could you have done differently not in a judgmental way 
but in a way to help you think through things so we can continue to develop in advance, okay? So we're gonna have some challenges and we're gonna wrap up here, but I wanna talk about these just really quickly because there are going to be some challenges and you need to understand that we are dopamine addicts and everything around us is making it worse. Our phones, our attention is getting pulled in a ton of different directions. We don't have to be bored ever. You know, I was in the license bureau getting my license plate renewed and I looked around at the people waiting and everybody was buried on their phone. I don't even think they mind waiting. Nobody's impatient because they're doom scrolling on their phone. I don't have to be bored anywhere. I don't even have to be bored at the red light. The next time you pull your car up to a red light and someone's sitting next to you, nine times out of 10, they're on their phone. So we, we are constantly looking for that dopamine hit, okay? And everybody thinks that a dopamine system is your reward system, and it's not. It's a motivation system, and it drives our seeking behavior, okay? So it's what causes us to want to go out and do things. It's the anticipation of the reward that drives the seeking behavior. It's not the moment we reach the top of the mountain and we stick the flag in and we say, cheese, that lasts less than a minute. Did you guys know that? Like when people climb Everest, they get like 30 seconds at the top. That's it. And they have to head back. So that all of those years of preparation, all of that training, all of that struggle, maybe multiple attempts, is not about the summit at all. And an annual business plan makes it about the summit. And I'm here to tell you it's about your journey to the summit that matters, okay? So once you get the reward, once you hit the goal, your dopamine drops. So if you've set these little baby silly goals for yourself, okay, it's not challenging you. You're not engaging your brain seeking behavior. So make sure you hack your brain a little bit there and you understand that setting a really high goal puts your brain in motion in a really beautiful way, okay? And you're gonna struggle with time management and prioritization, guys. This is where, you know, an accountability partner can really help you. Um, you're gonna have trouble dealing with setbacks and unexpected circumstances. Like all of a sudden we find out today that my property is gonna fall through if we don't get a new roof or the septic inspection failed or whatever. Our, our business is just full of these things that tug and pull at our attention. And everything looks equally urgent and important, okay? And we need to have plans and systems in place so that we're always focused on what is urgent and important and we're not worried about things that maybe look important or look urgent, but they're really not. Um, you're going to have trouble staying motivated and focused. You are, and a plan will help you do that. There's a reason horses have blinders on, guys. There's a reason for that. <laughs> People could benefit from some blinders. And staying motivated and focused is all about distilling down what you need to do. And when you've done it, that's it. You feel good about what you've done. Time blocking and creating a conducive work environment is often overlooked by agents. That's something else in the book that you can learn about that'll really help you. There's some fantastic uh, new methodology around time blocking that if you've had trouble with it before, this could really work for you. So I might recommend that to you. Um, sometimes it's hard for us to develop a positive mindset and remember to practice self-care. We don't have room for that in our schedule. You know, my idea of self-care is getting to bed before, you know, midnight <laughs> sometimes. I'm like, that's not really self-care. So we want to make sure we're doing what we can to hold space in our schedules to develop a positive mindset and practice some self-care. Cultivating some discipline and resilience. Uh, resilience is so critically important right now. And part of resilience that will help is when you start tracking what you're doing. And you can see that even though I didn't write a contract today, I did talk to this many people. I did get this person pre-approved. I did move the ball toward the end zone. 
And then that helps with motivation and it helps with resilience because it's like, no, I'm, I'm doing the things, right? Celebrate your small wins and milestones. Seek ongoing support and feedback. Really, I can't recommend to you enough. Find your tribe and stay committed and accountable to your goals. Oftentimes we just give up too fast. So I'm only asking you for 12 weeks. Just do it in full faith. Just play all out for 12 weeks. And then you can reassess and decide where you want to go from there. All right. So that's what I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to stop sharing. Does anyone have any questions or comments or anything like that? Anything I can help with? Anyone using a 12 week year now? No. Uh, How many have you have done? You have you got annual business plans? You can go ahead and type in chat. I know a lot of you are probably listening. You're not on uh camera and that's fine um how many of you have an annual plan go ahead and type into chat i would love to see that let me open up my chat window here and i do think you know it's important to know how much money you need to profit in a year right we got we got to make sure it's enough we got to make sure we're tracking so i do that but beyond that then i break it down into these 12 week years so i'm sure I'm tracking and I actually I got to be honest when I when I figure out what my profitability goal is um, I usually blow it out of the water because I'm doing 12 week years and I'm constantly pushing myself so by the end of a 12 week year I'm a different person than I was three months ago I know more I've done more I have a different pipeline and then I build on that and decide exactly what actions I'm going to take the next 12 weeks. So it makes it so much more actionable and you can customize it. Oh my gosh, Julie, where are you? Julie, 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 there you are. Julie, I'm telling you, it's insanely good. And if you need a quick fix of James Clear, just go to his website and subscribe to his newsletter. The three, two, one. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that too. It's, it's phenomenal. I've been wanting to read it for years and I don't do it. So I'm, I'm doing it today. <laughs> it's going to read. I'm going to tell you guys um, just something personal about myself. I, my entire life, I've been kind of that rebel kid. My mom would tell you I'm very undisciplined, unorganized and all of the things. Right. And I'm sure no one relates to that at all. Um, and I, I was like, he talks a lot about habit stacks, you know, and ritual. And I'm like, I'm not a very ritual uh, oriented person. I don't have these routines. You know how you know some people in your life that are just extremely regimented and routine and you're like, oh, if I could only be like that. Well, when you read the book, what he's gonna reveal that is absolutely true is that we're, we're all that way. We, we all have routines. Even being unorganized is a, a stack of habits, arguably bad ones, not helpful ones, but being unorganized is a stack of habits that I've picked up over the, over the, you know, the years. It's just, I didn't share my, my room with anybody. So if I threw all my crap on the floor, who cared? And then I could see everything, right? There's no, I don't have to wonder where something is. I can just see it all. You know, those things, you know, crazy teenagers think. But really, when you when you look at what you're doing that's not helpful, it's a collection of these tiny little habits and decisions. And what I found was I'm extremely routine in my approach. Some of those routines are more helpful than others. But once you realize that you can construct and engineer those routines in a way that actually makes it easy to flow from one thing to the next, you can get so much done. You will love it. I'm excited for you to read it. No, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions or ahas? Ashton, have you read Atomic Habits? I bought it. I gave it to my daughter to read it, but I think I have to grab it and read it myself. Yeah, you need to get it back from her. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I just really like the idea of um, the amount of friction that is attributed to us doing something 
has everything to do with our likelihood or unlikelihood of doing it. So he uses the example of the television, watching less television. So I'll, we'll just use that as an example in the book. And he talks about if you wanted to watch less TV and you're like, you know what? Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop watching so much TV and you did nothing different. The likelihood is that you're probably going to watch TV because let's face it, the couch is comfy and the remote is sitting right there. So he's like, how about you uh, hide the remote? So you put the remote in the kitchen for the living room TV. And now there's going to be, you're going to sit down on the couch and you reach for the remote and it's not going to be there. You've created friction. So now you got to get back up, right? And now you're thinking, why isn't the remote there? Well, the remote's not there because your, your grown up self said, hey, I'm going to watch less TV. So I'm going to start keeping the remote in the kitchen. And then you might even catch yourself in that moment. But let's say you're like, no, no, I'm going to go get that remote. And damn it, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch the TV. He's like, you, now you could add more friction that you keep the remote in the kitchen. You take the batteries out and you keep the batteries in another room. And every time you add a layer of difficulty or friction to something, you become less likely to do it. And he goes all the way to the, he goes all the way to the end and he says, you know, what if you just wanted to watch less TV and you unplugged your TV and you put it in the basement? The likelihood that you would watch less TV is pretty good, right? Rather than just making a decision. So engineering your environment, creating friction between, it's kind of like the old, if I wanted to like eat less Oreo cookies, how about I stop buying Oreo cookies, right? I'm creating friction. If they're in the kitchen, I will eat them all of them. I'll fight my kids for those things. But if they're not in my kitchen, it's no big deal. Out of sight, out of mind. Now reverse engineer that and look at the things you're avoiding in your business. And the reason you're avoiding them nine times out of 10 is there's too much friction between where you are now and the completion of the activity. There's too much friction. Think about it in terms of shopping online. If it's too hard, if there's too many clicks, if there's too many screens, if I can't just see everything I need all at once, I just go to another website, right? Amazon makes it easy. How many clicks between when I land on a product and, and it, it's, congratulations, your order has been received. What is it, like three clicks? Very little friction. Before I know it, I've done it. So if you want to stop doing something, start putting friction, creating friction, obstacles between you and completing it. And if you're having a hard time implementing something, reduce the steps, reduce the amount of friction between where you are now and getting started on that task. Okay? I well, may add go. Think, eight minutes. I, Sorry. Good. I may add something there. Um, I used to go door knocking a lot. Like I would jump into my car, go door knocking. Then I got the slow on that one. Now, if I want to jump into my car, I bring all kind of excuses. However, if I change my environment, I'm not going through the same routine that right now I got so um, so lazy with it. It thinks the result is going to be different. So what I do right now, I call my colleagues and listen, Let's be accountable. I see you tomorrow at four o'clock door knocking. So I'm not following the same habit. I change right. it. So right now I have to jump into my car. I have no choice. So that's right. one uh, idea of uh, changing the habits and the routine. Yeah, for sure. And I think that too, like our brains, especially entrepreneurial brains, love novelty. So if you find yourself, and I do this all the time, I'll be sitting here at my desk and I just start to get that daze, you know, where you're like, I know I have like two more hours of this to go. And I'm just like, my eyes are starting to cross. If you do physical activity and you move and then you change your environment, it, you'll feel like a new person and you'll have your focus back. So just... Sitting there white knuckling it isn't always the best way. And Ashton, I love what you said about, I called a colleague and I said, meet me here. Because you're less likely to disappoint someone else than you are to disappoint yourself. It's a sad fact, but it's so true. <laughs> it's That's right. so That's true. Right. 
Thank you very much, uh, Stacy, for your uh, very uh, precious training here. Now, if anyone in the audience, people here, uh, they need to get back to me uh, just for brainstorming, uh, just come out of that routine of thinking the same way. If you need someone to put light in your, let's say, uh, this is my 2024 um, business plan, what do you think? Or if you'd like to brainstorm, just give me a quick call. There are a lot of agents calling me for that reason. Uh, and also, if you need someone to hold you accountable, I'm very good with calling, not calling you, actually testing you. Did you go door knock? Did you do your uh, your goal setting? Did you uh, talk to your prospect today? This kind of things. We can have each other uh, accountable. So you can always reach me. Uh, you all have my information. I give you my cell number, 647-407-4049. Thank you, Stacy, for coming up next week. Same time on Thursday, we are going to dive deep into um, database. And there are a lot there of- There you go, see? A lot of, uh, uh, lot of tricks and tips that I can help you with that. So database is the heart of our business. On Wednesday, we're going to continue finishing part four of door knocking. So next week, Wednesday, same time, and Thursday for database. Um, and um, give me a call if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Stacey, for coming up. And um, really appreciate that. All the yeah, best. It's my pleasure. Have a great day, guys. And if anyone has any questions, can I just be honest with you? I collaborate with Ashton all the time. It's well worth your while to pick up the phone and call him. It really is. He's He is a wealth of information for you. Okay. Thanks, Ashton, for always Thank being you. my accountability partner. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Have, have a great everyone. day.